Hi, Matthew. Hello. Um, so just quickly, Matthew is uh, Head of Ethical Investments at Uniting Financial Services, who are the finance arm of the Uniting Church in New South Wales and the ACT. And Matthew is responsible for the ethical investing and in fact for changing, uh, in part changing Uniting's strategy as far as it's investing over a period of time. So Matthew, if you would, I'll drop out. If you're happy to, sh if you're right sharing your your PowerPoint, then that would be great. Yes. And um, I'll disappear and I'll leave it with you. Thank you very much. I'll just get my PowerPoint up. I can see that. Um, hi, thanks. Um, thanks, Andrew. I really appreciate the introduction there, and I really enjoyed Alice's um, presentation. That was um, absolutely fascinating. Um, but thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you tonight. And and tonight, I really just want to go through a couple of key things about Uniting Financial Services. I, you know, I would like to tell you a little bit about who we are. You know, and that will bring the context into you know the whole ethical investing journey that we've been on. Um, I'd like to talk to you about the origins and history of the United Church ethical and ESG policy and, and sort of give you a bit of a timeline of how that's evolved and talk especially around the fossil fuel divestment strategy that we implemented a number of years ago. Um, and one of the really important themes that is, that is emerging is the sustainable development goals and just talk to you about how that our policy aligns to those sustainable development goals and how important that is. And then I really want to get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of it and talk about the broad policy implementation and how important that is for us and then, and then we'll wrap up. So who is UFS? Um, as Andrew pointed out, we're the Treasury and Investment Arm of the United Church in New South Wales and the ACT. We, we manage the church's financial assets and we provide a, an oversight of the church's investment strategy. Um, we have a number of different clients and, and they're, they're church clients, you know, that are raised, uh, you know, from parishes like uh, Way, Wayside Chapel. Hey, Matthew, can I just jump in for one sec? Sorry, we just, your presentation's not up. We just got your um, page. We just got your page of your computer page, your uh, desktop showing up. Try another one. Now we're right. Can you see that one? Yep. All right, we'll run it like that. My apologies. Okay, so we're up to there. Okay, so um, we have uh, a number of um, church organisations that are our clients, uh, the Paris Missions, Wayside Chapel, Parramatta Mission, um, Aged Care, Early Learning. They're important clients of ours. Um, and the key for us is to deliver competitive market returns to our investors. Um, and the importance of that is also is, uh, of the organisation is to pay a distribution uh, back to the church to support mission of the church. And we see that as a vital part of us as an organisation. Um, what we also do is that everything we do is governed by our ethical and ESG investment policy. Um, our principles are aligned to the sustainable development goals, which I'll touch on a little bit in a little bit more detail later. But one of the key things of our, our policy is that we seek positive investments. Um, but as well as avoiding some of the negative ones. Um, and that is the basis of how we issued a sustainable development goals bond at the end of last, last year, which was the first uh, sustainable development goals bond issued by not-for-profit in Australia. So effectively, we have two, two lines of business. We have a balance sheet and we have a, a managed funds business, which has a, a domestic equities portfolio and a multi-asset portfolio. So ethics. Where are the origins? Well, what you see in front of you now is a, uh, a, a, an extract from the policy that dates back to the early 1980s. And I just wanted to show you that about how the church is pioneers in this space. You know, back in, you know, if we move to the next slide, you know, back with formation of the church in 1977, um, ethical investment policy was established in the early, early 1980s. So that they were, uh, they were pioneers in, in establishing a way of investing, which we're now seeing the world move towards. Um, there are a number of reviews of those policies throughout the 90s and the, and the 2000s. But, and then in 2010, we became a signatory of the PRI. And the principles of responsible investing are becoming a very big part of the investment community. You know, it's all about incorporating, incorporating ESG into your investment analysis, uh, being active owners and incorporate ESG issues into your ownership policies and practices. Um, seeking the appropriate disclosures, um, being proactive and, and accepting implementation of the principles. 
and also working together to enhance effectiveness in implementing the principles. But more importantly is reporting on that. And that's becoming a bigger challenge for everybody and a bigger requirement is to be a signatory of the PRI. One of the biggest things we did, um, I think, since I've been at the uh, Uniting Church is the fossil fuel divestment strategy. Uh, the church have been, I think, believer leaders in this space. They looked at this back in 2012 when it was only sort of emerging as a big issue within the investment community. Um, but they challenged us. They asked us to look, how could we implement a policy that meant that we could invest in companies that invested in fossil fuels? Um, we went away for about six months um, and took that on board and wanted to try and understand if we could actually implement a policy like that. Um, it's not easy to do those sorts of things. Um, we went and spoke to our managers, a lot of our equity managers, to see if they would implement that policy. We got external advice from consultants and we worked with them over a six to 12 month period to try and see if we could implement such a policy. Uh, we did eventually come up with something and we, in that process, we really wanted to be pragmatic, but we also wanted to be positive. And what I mean by that is that in our divestment strategy that we put together back in 2013, we implemented the policy over a three year period, uh, acknowledging that it's hard to just implement a, a very st uh, strict policy like divestment from fossil fuels um, in just one clear cut. So in 2014, we, we uh, said that we would not invest in companies that have more than 40% of net revenue exposure to uh, direct extraction of fossil fuels. And what I mean by direct uh, net revenue is that we wanted to encourage companies to, you know, look at renewable energy, look at putting R&D into renewable energy, and if there was a spend on that, we'd use that as an offset. But we still wanted to be quite pro proactive, and then in 2015, we ratcheted that net revenue um, uh, hurdle down to 25%. And then in 2016, we went down to um, 10%. And then from 2017 onwards, it's zero. And we're currently uh, continuing with that policy. And that policy is still fluid. We're still reviewing it um, because the, the, the industry is changing quite, quite rapidly. Um, in 2016, we also added a little bit more positives to our, our, our investments um, in the policy. Uh, we wanted to focus on being positive and, and looking for more renewable energy projects within our um, asset allocation. And then in 2017, 2018, we went through a process of SDG alignment, which I'll touch on in a moment. And we've also gone through a process of, of scoring all of our portfolios. The SDGs. Um, these are sort of an extension of the Millennium Development Goals. And in 2015, they, the PRI announced a 15 year plan to um, achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, why I think, or why the church, believes that these are so important is because they're becoming a universal language in the investment community. And why is it so important uh, for the church is that each of those sustainable development goals have a link to our principles that the church abides, uh, uh, invests by. 14 investment principles that the, the Uniting Church has that are very similar to what they were back in the early 1980s. Now we're seeing the development of these sustainable development goals that align to the principles of the Uniting Church. So it just shows that the church has been a leader in this space for a long time. Then nothing more rewarding to see that the investment community is moving towards these sustainable development goals, which is something that the church has been doing for a long time. Implementation. Um, I think this is a really important part of it because it's very easy to say that you're doing it, but you have to show that you're doing it. And we are really trying to implement that across all of our asset classes. We buy green bonds for our domestic portfolios, uh, our fixed income portfolios. Um, that market's been developing quite significantly over the last 10 years. We have external managers that manage our fixed interest for us. And you know, we encourage them to buy um, green bonds. And we have an international credit fund who has 12% of its exposure in that fund to green bonds. And in fact, our uh, both domestic, uh, domestic internally and externally managed uh, funds have 39% exposure to green, social or sustainable bonds in the portfolio. And a lot of those are linked to those SDGs that you see below in the bottom of that, um, that PowerPoint. Lending, that's another one we've worked really hard on over the last couple of years, both uh, commercial and church lending. Asset specific and tenancy assessment having a look at you know, what, what is the asset used for and who are the tenants? You know, are, that, are we comfortable with the tenants in the building? Would they meet our ethical principles and guidelines? But one of the big things that we did over the last 12 months was have a look at the 169 SDG targets and the sub targets 
and we created a, a questionnaire, which had eventually was 20 questions um, to have a look at our portfolio. We engaged with four university students to come in and look at that questionnaire and go through each of our 280 loans to see what sort of alignment we had to the SDGs within our portfolio. And that was a big step in, in, in assessing our lending, our lending portfolio. Particularly the next stage of that will be even more important to see how that will impact how we look at provisions and how we, we can link that to pricing of all of our portfolios. Growth assets. We have mandates with external fund managers. We encourage them to engage with, um, with companies about you know, certain issues that are concern of the church. Um, you know, human rights is a big one at the moment, particularly with the Modern Slavery Act. Um, so we will either join them with them engagement or we encourage them to do that. Um, we buy, we've joined with other investors to buy commercial office buildings in a fund that is actually uh, has a low neighbours rating and with the intention to allocate capital to uplift that uh, neighbours rating and therefore in, in some of those improvements would be energy efficiency is one of them which would link, be a link to SDG 13. Uh, another one is that um, we held, uh, we owned an office building in the CBD of Brisbane and it had some cladding on it that was um, uh, that was flammable. Um, and this is great, this is ethics in action. Uh, we, uh, we made a decision as, as, a, as a board and management that we should remove that before any, any sort of legislative requirement came in because we felt it was our duty to uh, look after our tenants. Um, and not only with, the, with the, the result of that, it's meant that we've had a greater increase in people being interested in the property, therefore increasing our leasing profile, uh, better uh, insurance uh, capabilities, and also increasing value. We're also looking at infrastructure assets to implement our solar, and, which implements solar and waste management strategies. Um, and uh, one of the other ones that it's not in that slide is social impact bonds. Um, we think that that's, that's an area we'd like to see grow um, we've been investing in some of the United Church ones, you know, and you know what's there's nothing better than to see sort of a, an individual receive, you know, improve socially and um, and how that impacts them um, in the long term. It would be very rewarding. Um, but one of the challenges we have with those sorts of things is how do we measure that? Um, and you know what what does it mean when you know an individual has has been reunited with his family? You know, as a great uh, family unit, what does that mean to that that child that goes on to have uh, secondary and tertiary education? You know, so what are the multiplier effects of that on on that individual and the economy in general? And that's one of the challenges that we have. You know, we we have um, how do we measure those sorts of things? One of the things we have implemented across our portfolio also to show that we are you know, true to label is that we score all of our portfolios, all of our fixed interest portfolios, our securities, all of our fixed, in, uh, sorry, all our equity securities, all our fixed interest uh, securities, all have a rating on it um, from A, which is very good, to D, which is not so good. But we also have that with our building, our infrastructure assets and social impact assets and our lending assets. So it's something that we've been developing over the last sort of uh, two years, and we're looking to develop it even more. So in summary, the United Church has been an ethical investor for over 40 years. They are pioneers in this play, uh, space, well before I joined it. The 14 investment principles are aligned to the SDGs, which we think is a, uh, is a universal language, and we're, we're seeing that um, being adapted within the industry faster and faster and, um, over the last six to 12 months. It's integrated across all of our asset classes, and we want to continue that. The next steps for us are to enhance our lending to SDG alignment, and probably the biggest challenge that we have is to develop meaningful impact reporting, which is really the key for us to show what does it mean when we allocate capital towards the SDGs. So I just want to thank you for that, and I'll finish there. Thank you.